In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you know our problems and our weaknesses better than we ourselves. In your love and by your power, Help us in our confusion and, in spite of our weakness, make us firm in faith. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First uh, lesson today is taken from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning with the fourth verse. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear, to hear as those who were taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I turned not backward, I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, 
but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this 16th Sunday after Pentecost 2021, the word comes to us from St. Mark's Gospel, the 8th chapter, verses 27 to 38. Who does God say that you are? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In our Gospel lesson this morning, our Lord Christ asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? Checking in, getting a sense of the mission. And it's interesting that he asks this question on the heels of having to heal a guy twice. Is he just another faith healer from Nazareth? Is he a prophet pointing the way for another one who is to come? Is he the fulfillment of all of the promises of God that we find in the Old Testament? Of course, Peter, through the work of the Holy Spirit, identifies our Lord Jesus as the Christ straight away. This is a miracle in itself. You are the Christ, he boldly confesses. And then Jesus further clarifies this confession of St. Peter by giving to his disciples and all of us who he is and what he has come to do or what he is going to do for us. So right here it is. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. To put emphasis on this, St. Mark, who wrote our gospel lesson, who chronicled it, he says this, and Jesus said it plainly. Plainly. Now that's as clear as it gets. That's the gospel in a nutshell. A lot of folks point to John chapter 3 for that, but you can also point to this passage right here. Jesus is the one for whom generations of God's people waited in anticipation for. You heard Isaiah preach about our Lord's passion this morning. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. It was this way, from the Roman barracks to Golgotha, To the cross. This is the passion that Isaiah is preaching about generations and generations and generations before the coming of our Lord Jesus. On the cross, 
Our Lord Jesus makes an atoning death that was foreshadowed by all of those sacrifices that we read about in Leviticus and and throughout the Old Testament. In Leviticus, it talks about how the, the life of the blood is where atonement is made. And so we see this on the cross. Taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb and sealed shut, Isaiah, again, preaches about this. Generations before our Lord. He talks about resurrection. He will swallow up death forever, Isaiah preaches. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of, the, of His people He will take away from all the earth. That's resurrection. 600 years before it happens. Jesus is the Christ. Peter gets it right. Peter's confession is our confession. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one whom they were waiting for. He is the Lord. Who has soundly, clearly, and plainly defeated sin, death, and the devil. For who? For the scribes, the chief priests, the elders... for the righteous ones? Because this question matters. Jesus the Christ defeats sin, death, and the devil for who? The least, the lost, the last. For the unrighteous and the awful. For who? For adulterers and drunks. For liars and thieves. For who does our Lord Christ come for and make atonement and rise again? For someone like me. For people like you. For sinners lost in the darkness of this world and unable to find their way out. That is who Jesus comes and dies for, makes atonement for, and then rises again on that Easter Sunday. He comes for people who are on the death train that has no exit. It is for you and for me that Jesus comes and does this saving work for us. In doing this, by dying on our behalf and rising in victory for us, Jesus makes us one with God. He reconciles us to the Father as Scripture says to us. For who does Jesus rise on Easter Sunday in His pierced flesh? For people whose bodies are failing and who will one day find themselves lowered into the vault. For us. For all of us. And He comes forth from that tomb on that first Easter in victory and in glory. So let's get back to our question then. Who does God say that you are? A miserable, worthless sinner? Not at all. No. All of you have been drowned in the waters of holy baptism and have been raised with Jesus. All of you were raised up out of that water and the Word as new people alive in faith in Jesus. So the deal is this. You Christians are seen from a very different perspective by God from from what you once were. Instead of seeing someone who is covered in the filth of sin and is unrighteous, God now sees someone who has been washed in the blood of His Son, the blood of the Lamb, and has been made clean and whole. The Father sees the Son in you, Christians. Who does God say that you are? He tells you. You're an heir to God's kingdom. You are a new creation. You are a righteous man and a righteous woman. And all of this is on account of Christ and His death and resurrection for you. So your righteousness is not your own, but comes from outside of yourself by faith in Jesus. This is God's sure and certain promise to you. And so one of the things that means for you is that it doesn't matter what people think of you. 
because what really ultimately matters is what God thinks of you. And you are his person, his man, his woman. As such, then, we claim this, we lay claim to this promise that God gives to us, and we hold it close. Because when times are tough, and we live in this broken world, so tough times come to us, and, and when they do, we remember that God in Jesus Christ is faithful to us, and all the way. And when we can't seem to stand it anymore, when we're at our end, when the pain and the trouble is just too much in this life. Here's what you do. Listen to this, Christians. We speak those promises that God has given to us back to God. We say back to God as His heir, as His beloved child, redeemed at a high price, a new creation. We speak back to God words like this. I am baptized. You claimed me there, God. I belong to you. I am absolved. You have forgiven me in Jesus Christ. And I will die trusting this. No matter what challenges this promise of yours, O God, no matter what brings this promise into question in this world and this life, nothing will cause me to waver. Because I know your word is sure and certain. For I know the one who is promised. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, Jesus says. I know Jesus, and that's what he promises to me. I know the one who is promised, whatever, whoever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. I know Jesus who makes that promise to me, and who has loosed me from the chains of sin, death, and the devil. And I know the one who says to me, this is my body, and this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. That one I know. And I know that Jesus keeps His promises to me. So dear Lord, hear me. Carry me through this. Be with me in this tough time, this valley of the shadow of death, and lead me through it. That's what we say back to God. Because we know that God will not let us go. He keeps His word to us. We know that to be true. See, faith, Christians, holds to the promises of God and clings to them especially when things are tough and hard in this life. And then faith gets its own voice and speaks those promises back to God, reminding God of His promises, if you will. God, of course, hears this and answers this. Because in you, the Father sees the Son and says this about you, Christian. This one is mine. I will see them through this. That's what God says about you. You're mine. And I claim you. I've claimed you in your baptism. I will claim you throughout your life. And nothing will separate you from my love in Jesus. Who does God say that you are? In merciful love, God says, you are mine forever in Jesus. And I will carry you through. To the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.